page 152 of Perak Shavu Esrim Shael, just starting from um, from uh, three lines, halfway through the third line, last says third last line on the previous page. Rabbi Chanina Shchiva Leberate. Rabbi Chanina's daughter died. Lo hava ka bechayala. He did not cry over her. Amra le divitu. He saw a sage for him. Tana golta apikat mi beitach. Is uh, is was the death nothing more than a chicken that you've taken out of your house? Amala. He said to her, Tante, oh, but I'll suffer two misfortunes. Ticha viivara. Loss of children as well as blindness. Uh, because he's an old man, and we know that from that page 151, that um, weeping by old people causes blindness. Savala kiha dama Rabbi Yochanan mishum Rabbi Yossi ben Katata. Rabbi Chanina subscribed to that which Rabbi Yochanan said in the name of Rabbi Yossi ben Katata. Shesh there are six six kinds of tears. Shalosh yafo v'shalosh raot. Three good kinds of tears and three bad kinds of tears. Shalashan v'shal bechi. So tears of smoke and tears over crying, Vishal Betakis and tears from stomach pain in the lavatory, Ra'ot, they're bad. Shall Sam Vishal Sakok Vishal Perot, tears from medicine, tears from laughter and tears from pungent produce like garlic or mustard seeds or onion, Yafot. These are good for the eyes. Now from Kohelet. Beyom Shiazu Shomri Habait Vitav Hitav Avut of Tul, for Gomer, in the days when the guards of the house will tremble and the powerful men will stoop or bow. In the days when the guards of the house will tremble, this is a reference to the, your flanks and your ribs. The powerful men will stoop, these are the legs. And the grinders are idle, uh, these are teeth. The Khashhu Haraot Baarbaot Baarubot, sorry, Elo a name and the gazes through windows are dimmed. These are the eyes. Amalai Kesal Rabbi Yosho Ben Khananya. The Emperor said to Rabbi Yosho Ben Khananya, May Tamaloa Tit Lave Avidan, why did you not come to Be Avidan? Amalei, so Rabbi Yosha said to the emperor, who's the emperor? We don't know. Tur Talag, the mountain is snowy. Sacharone Glidin, surrounding it is ice. Kalbohi lo nevachin, nevachin, its dogs do not bark. So, uh, oh, and Tachanohi lo Tochanin, its grinders do not grind. Beirav Amri, the students of the Academy of Rav, added Adla Avidna Bechishna. For that which I have not lost, I am searching. In other words, he's all bent over. Like that when he walks. I thought they'd go through that and explain what each one would be. Well, so the he, does, he does here. Does he? Explain. Here he does. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'll okay. read it. Uh, Rabbi Hosho ben Chanania said to him enigmatically, the snowy mountain is surrounded with ice, meaning that his hair had turned white. His dogs do not bark, meaning that his voice could no longer be heard. His grinders have ceased grinding, meaning that his teeth had fallen out. In the school of Rav, they say that he added, I am searching for that which I have not lost because an old man walks bent over and appears to be searching for something. Ah. Tanya. Totna Brysa, Rabbi Yossi Bar Kisma, Omer. Tava Tre Mitzlat, two better than three. Vaila Lechada de Azla Velo Atia, woe to the one that goes and does not come back. Mahi, what is that? Amara Sista Yan Kuta. Yeah. Two is better than three. Is that when you're young, you can walk on two legs. It's better than when you need a walking stick. Uh-huh. Yan 
so what is that that goes and does not return? You Kiyata Rabtimi, when Rabtimi came from, uh, to Bagel from Israel, Amar, he said, Yan Kuta Klila Devada, this is a crown of roses. Sivuta Klila Dechilfa, old age, is a crown of nettles. He's got thorns, but we get the picture. Tana Mishmed Rabbi Meir. Dok Bechachei Tishkach Ben Nigrei. Chew well with teeth, and you will find the food in your steps. Is that the way you've got it? Um, grind food with your teeth, and you will find in your feet the strength to carry your body. Aha. Makes sense. We were sated with bread, we lived well, and we saw no evil. Amaleshwal Ravyoda Shinana, sharp witted one. Sharp one. Shre Sakait, sorry, sorry, Sakait, the Ayel Lachmach, open your sack. That is your mouth. And let your bread enter. Ad arbi in shnin mechla male until one is forty. Solid foods are beneficial. Mikan ve'elach mishte male from then on liquids are beneficial. Great. So I've got one more month. Amale hahu gazal Rabbi Yosho ben Karcha. A certain eunuch said to Rabbi Yosho ben Karcha, Mehacha. The Karkina Kamahave, how far is it from here to Karkina? Amale Kamehacha Le Gozanya. As far as from here to Gozanya. Goz, uh, Do you want me to give you the expansion? Yeah. Okay. A certain eunuch who was an apostate said the following to Rabbi Yehoshua ben Korcha as a provocation. How far is it from here to Karchina? Rabbi, the provocateur's intention was to hint to the fact that Rabbi Yehoshua ben Korcha was bald. And the word is Korea. Mm-hmm. He said to him, It is the same as the distance from here to the mountains of Gozen, hinting at the eunuch's <laughs> castration, which in Aramaic is Goza. Well, you know what, if you didn't know that, you wouldn't work it at all. Which is obviously the way I read it at first, I had no idea, now it's so much funnier. And it, it continues, they're slinging off at each other. So, how about if I read the Hebrew and you yeah. do the English? Okay, so, Amale Tzeduki, Bar Chakacha Ba'arba'a, Amale Ikara Shlipa Bitmanya. Go ahead. The apostate said to him, A bald back is sold for four dinner. He said to him, A castrated goat <laughs> is sold for eight. I don't know if that's such an insult. Yeah, I'm not sure what the insult is now. Uh, uh, castrated he, goats. Uh, so the eunuch said to Rabbi Yeshua that he's nothing more than a cheap, bald goat. Mm-hmm. Rabbi Yeshua replies, if we compare ourselves to goats, you're indeed entitled to more prestige as a goat because a castrated goat is renowned for being worth more. Its succulent flavour is worth twice as much as a non-castrated one. So he said, you're a better goat than me. <laughs> ah, that's true. There's a little note here. Rabbein yeah. Chananel explained that after the eunuch degraded Rabbi Yehoshua ben Korcha, calling him a bold buck, Rabbi Yehoshua responded by saying that the eunuch was just goading him to admit to the superiority of a eunuch over a bald person. His statement, does a castrated male goat speak words of rebuke, mean, uh, means 
you are not quarrelling with me, you are just scolding me. Well, we haven't got to that bit yet. Okay. Uh, so, Chazia de los Sayem Misane, Unix or Rebish Amale, de Al Sus Melech, de Al Hamor ben Harin, Ud Minale, Birig Lohi, Bar Inish. De lo Havloha, de Hapir Ukvir Tav Mine. Okay, so okay. the apostate saw that Rabbi Asher ben Kocha was not wearing shoes. He said to him, One who rides on a horse is a king, one who rides on a donkey is a free man, and one who wears shoes is at least a human being. One who does neither this nor that, someone who is buried in the earth is better than him. And now we get to Amalai Goza Goza Tlat Amratli Tlat Shamat Hadrat Panim Zakan Simchat Lev Isha Nachalat Hashem Banim Baruchamakom Shemana Acha Mikulam Okay. Okay. Um, he said to him, Yudok, Yudok, you said to me three things, and now hear three things. The glory of the face is the beard, the joy of the heart is a wife, and the portion of the Lord is children. Blessed is the omnipresent who has denied you all. I'm a lay. Kacha Mitsuyana Amale Ikra Shlifa Tachicha. Go ahead. He said to him, Does a bald man quarrel? This is the eunuch. Does a bald man quarrel? He said to him, Does a castrated male goat speak words of rebuke? (laughs) Both sides are behaving with equal charity and kindness. I would have said beneath themselves. <laughs> Considering I thought a, one of the points of a eunuch is that it kind of draws out their, it removes their hostility. hostility yeah. Actually, one of the greatest um, Byzantine generals and admirals was a eunuch. Hmm. Very, very successful. Do you remember recall his name? I can't recall his name. But, uh, maybe, it, I don't know, it's really interesting. I'd like to know on what grounds, whether it was just because because he was um, he was more uh, maybe standoffish or more, um, uh, what's the word, uh, removed mm-hmm. from emotion and therefore was able to control and, and manage in a better way. Perhaps that's why. I know that or was it eunuchs than the next looked thing? for could look for other forms of sexual satisfaction. Really? Mm. I've never heard that at all. Um, I, I forget about it. You know, sort of fondling. You know, there was a film made about a famous castrato singer. And he used to have affairs with women where his brother would, he would enjoy the fondling and the rest of it and then his his brother would finish off the business business for him. Okay. I mean, when you think of it, cuddling's very nice. can be very satisfying. Yeah, but I don't know what it, it would For uh, someone who... You you assume that they've lost their sexual drive because their testicles are being removed. I thought it was more also devoid of emotions as well. Maybe not completely, but... Oh, they're certainly greed and hatred. Flourished, if you think of the Chinese court 
when the eunuchs used to get on top and battle for power within the empire, if there was a weak emperor, um, the eunuchs could keep them away from the government and everything had to go through them and mm. they worked like mad to get huge fortunes and control the situation and send benefits to their families to whom they still felt a responsibility or to just to make themselves very rich and they used to fight battles within the court. Right. Okay, that's a good point. Let's talk about that. Amalei Rabbi Le Rabbi Shimon Ben Chalafta Mifnei Marlo Hikbaunu Panecha Baregel Why did we not call upon you on the festival? Kedera Shehikbilu Avotai Lavotecha In the same manner that my forefathers called upon your forefathers Amalei Rabbi Shimon said to Rabbi Slaim Naasu Gvohim the rocks uh, have grown tall. Krovim nasarachakim, what was near has become distant. Mishtaim nasu shalosh. From two legs, I have become a person walking on three legs. Mesim shalom babayt batel. That which promotes peace in the home has ceased. Namely, the sexual drive which motivates a couple to make peace is no more. Hmm. That's very interesting. It shows the basis of the normal relationship, certainly at that time. So, when he, say, when he says the rocks have grown tall, it means that it's more difficult to get to you? Yeah, impediments. And yeah. what was near has become distant because it's just more difficult to travel. Yeah. And two to three is the walking stick. Uh-huh. Um, so these are... This is also from Kohelet. The Sugru Zlatim Bashuk Vagome when doors in the street are shut. Elun Kavav Shal Adam. These are the orifices of a person's body that are stopped up. Bishval Kol Hatachana Bishvil Kor Kavan She'eno Tochen. When the sound of a grinding of the grinding is low, on account of the stomach which does not grind, that is digest the food. Mm-hmm. The I think I'm half asleep this morning. The Yakom le Kol Hatipor, Shafil Tipor Minarto Mishnato, when one rises at the voice of the bird, even the chirping of a bird wakes mm. an aged person from his, from his sleep. The Yakvi Sahu Kol Benot, Hashir, Shafil Kol Sharim, Besharotomot, I love Keshucha. And all the voices of song grow dim, even the voices of male singers and females. The female singers sound to him like a whisper because of his old age. Ah, Barzilai Hagiladi Amar le David, Barzilai the Giladite, said to David, Ben Shmonim Shana Anachi Hayom Hayeda Ben Toblara. I'm 80 years old today, can I distinguish between good and bad? By the way, you notice in the last one that he's. They're listening to male and female singers. Mikan she de otan shells kinim mishtanot. From here, we can see that the senses of the elderly undergo change in advanced old age. Imitam. Can your servant, I, taste what I eat and what I drink? No. From here, uh, we infer that the lips of elderly people split. That's interesting. Track and weather. 
correctly. He spells it. I think it's interesting. There's an, uh, an assumption there that the lips have something to do with the sense of taste. Hmm. Where we now know scientifically, medically, whatever, that it's the taste buds that lose their power with age. A young person's taste buds are much more sensitive than the old ones. Imesh ma'od bekol sharim v'sharot mikan shaz nehem shaz kenim mit kavdot can I still hear the singing of male singers and female singers? From here, we see that the ears of elderly people become heavy and able to hear properly. Amarav. Bazilai Hagilaji Shakara Hava. He was a liar. And Bazilai. he merely wanted to avoid joining David upon his return to Jerusalem. Dehahi Anta Dehavya Be Rabbi. There was a certain maidservant in, in Rebbe's household, but Tishin Vitatain Shin, she was 92 years old. The Havat Tama Kidra, she used to taste the pot while it was being cooked to see if it needed, needed any extra flavouring. So there you go. We can see that indeed you don't lose your taste, you just lose everything else. Rava Amar, Baz, actually, if anything, your food might even, for a young person, might even get better in taste. Because the older person, maybe if their, if their taste starts going away, mm. they really... They raise the level of spicing and salting and exactly. things to get it the way they remember it should be. Yesterday, the um, chef asked me to taste the... Um, the sauce, the tomato, the what is it, Napoli sauce for the mm. spaghetti for the children. No, he said, taste the Napoli sauce. So I tasted it. I said, oh, it's great. I said, it's a bit, it's a bit sweet. And he said, oh, I'll put extra sugar in because it's mostly going to be for children. Yeah. Uh, Rava Amar. Bazilai Hagilaji Shatuf. Bizima Chava, he was steeped in immor in immorality. Vechol Hashatuf Bizman Zikna Kofetet Alav, and whoever is steeped in immorality, old age comes upon him suddenly. He's got promiscuity. <laughs> so his physical deterioration was due to his too much sex. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> He's going blind. <laughs> Tanya, Brisa, Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Yosef, Omer, tell me, day Chachemim calls one Shema Zikin in Chachma, Nitosefet Bahem. Torah scholars, <coughs> the older they become, the more does wisdom increase within them. Shnema, Bishishim Chachma Varech Yamim Tavuna. As it says, in the aged is wisdom, and in length of days, understanding. The Amei Haaretz, and for those without Torah knowledge, or Amachan Am Haaretz, a regular person. And he's got, and there's ignoramuses for old. Ignoramuses. Steinsatz has got Kol's man shema zikinin tipshut, tipshut nitosefet bahen. The older they become, the more does foolishness increase within them. Shnemar mesir safa le neemanim ta'ams kenimikach. He distorts the utterances of the trustworthy and takes reason away from the elders. Gam migavoha yirau. They even fear from the heights. They even fear a height. What do you have there? <sighs> they even fear height. Also, when there, there's a long quote 
The Gemara continues interpreting verses from Ecclesiastes. The verse states, Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and terrors shall be on the road, and the almond tree shall blossom, and the grasshopper shall drag itself along, and the caperberry shall fall, for a person goes to his eternal home, and the mourners circle the marketplace. The Gemara explains, also when they shall be afraid of that which is high. This means that even a small knoll on a road seems to him, the elderly, like the highest of mountains. Uh, I'll let you do the explanation of this. Shall feel look at Gav Shushit Katana Doma Alav Kahare Harim? So the smallest of knolls appears like? Uh, seems to him, like the highest of mountains. Oh, that matches up with what we read before about the about the mounds, mm, yeah. about the the rocks that have grown tall. Um, the chat chanim b'derech b'shashem mehalach mehalach b'derech na'asulo t'vahim. And terrors shall be on the road. This means that while he is walking on the road, he will have terrors. That is. He will fear falling or otherwise suffering injury. Vianet Vianet Hashaked Zo Kliboset. And the almond tree shall blossom. This is the hip bone. What does that mean? That protrudes from the skin of an elderly person. <coughs> when you lose, when your flanks. As you get older, your muscles wither, yeah. and your flank, your bones start showing through. Which is apparently what it means. Vistabel he chagav elo agavot. And the grasshopper hagav shall drag itself along. Yistabel by replacing the letter chet of hagav with an ayin. This can be understood as referring to the buttocks, agavot. And the tafer ha'aviona zo chenda. And the caper berry shall fall. This is sexual desire that ceases. Mm-hmm. It, uh, if you remember, I, I just suddenly struck me. If you remember the picture we saw of the caperberries ages ago. Yeah. They look a little bit like <laughs> the top of a penis. I think they're testicles. Well, they could be. Yeah. But they're sort Wasn't of... more round? They're roundish. Rav Kahana was reciting a section of scripture before Rav. Kimata lahai kara, when Rav Kahana came to this verse, Nagid about the waning of desire in old age, Nagid ve itna, Rav uttered a long sigh. Ama, Rav Kahana said to him, Shmamina batel lechende de Rav. You can infer from this sigh that Rav's desire has ceased. Ama Rav Kahana, mighty piv ki. What's the meaning of where it says, For God spoke and it came to be? That must also be from God. It's a sound. There's a long uh, thing. From that which is written, and then he quotes it all. For he spoke and it was. He commanded and it stood. He understands this to mean that God created man with desires that push him to do things that he would not do if he acted purely on the judgment of his intellect. Rav Kahana therefore interprets the verse in the following manner. Uh So for God spoke and it came to be, uh, Zo Isha, that a man marries, who who one works hard to raise 
these are children. Tana Bryce Todd, Isha Chemet Malet. So I feel like we're doing the um, Hagada. Tana Isha Chemet Malet. A woman is like a leather jug full of excretions. Malet. <laughs> 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 um, his opening. I'll take this case quietly. His opening is full of blood, menstrual blood. Ra Kol Ratin Achareha. Yes. Um, everyone chases after her. How true. With this, uh, uh, he, 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 the full extension. Uh, Tana taught in the Brisa, a woman is essentially a flask full of feces, a reference to the digestive system, and her mouth is full of blood, a euphemistic reference to menstruation. Yet, Yet men are not deterred, and they all run after her with desire. Kihalat Adam Ha'adam El Beit so man goes to his eternal home. Amar Rabbi Yitzchak, Melamed shekol tzadik v'tzadik notin lo madod, mador lefik vador. This teaches, so man goes to his eternal home, this teaches that every righteous person is given lodgings to fit in his eminence. <coughs> is that, I was thinking that might correspond to, to the type of woman that we now. Not at this point. Mm. That's interesting. That's how I would have, based on all the way we've been going, yeah. that's how I would have put it. Mashal, the melech that shenich nas hu vav tavla ir. This can be compared to a king who, together with his servants, entered a city. Kashen nich nasin. Kol am b'shay echad nich nasin. All of them enter through the same gate. Kashen lanin. But when they spend the night, kol echad b'echad nasin lo mador lefi kvado. Each one is given lodgings in accordance with his eminence. So too, although everyone dies, not everyone receives the same reward in the world to come. Shiva, 
a person's soul moans over him all the seven days after someone dies, Shnema Fenafsho Alav Te'eval. Because it says uh, in the second half of the verse of the Pasuk, and his soul will mourn over itself. Uh, and it says, Ve Asla Aviv Evel Shivachimim, and he ordained a mourning for his father seven days. In grey shit somewhere. Ah, that will be for that will be for Noah because he said Shiva. His I think his father died. He said Shiva, Mm -hmm. and then. That's when the storm came. That's when they got on the boat. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Um, Amar Rav Yehuda, Med she'en lo menachamin, deceased person has no mourners, Hol chinasra b'nei adam v'yoshvim b'mkomo, ten men should go and sit in his place, where, uh, place where the person died, and accept condolences. Uh-huh. Every day, Ravi Huda would bring a group of ten men. And they would sit. Uh, in his place, Lachashivayamim, and after seven days, Itchazay le Bechelme de Ravi Huda, the dead man, dead man appeared in Ravi Huda's dream. Bamale, Tanuach datach datecha shehinachta et dati. Let your mind be at ease, for you have set my mind at ease. We don't. It's a, that's a custom that's died out. If someone dies alone, you don't have a group of people going to that person's house or wherever, and then act acting as the bereaved relatives, because the person has no bereaved relatives. You'll have people going, and you know, you might have a minion for the person, but no one takes the place of the family. I see. Mm. It's very interesting. I don't know that well. I, I mean, you're uh, talking about the custom, but I'm yeah. I'm curious what the halakha is. Is there a oh, halakha? Yeah, there's a halakha. If a person passes away and has no relatives to mourn for him, ten people come and sit in the person's home for the full seven days, while others come and comfort them, in accordance with the example of Rav Yehuda. However, the Rema writes, I have not seen people do this. Even so, if the deceased has no mourners, ten people gather and pray in the place where the person died for all seven days of the morning, in accordance with Rav Yehuda's actions as related in the Gemara. Amar Rav Yehuda, Kol Shalmim Bifni Ahmed, everything that people say in the presence of a corpse, Yodah is known to that soul, Adshi Satyam HaGolel, until the top of the casket is closed before burial. Kligay Bar Rav Yehuda, Bar Rav Yishim Bar Kharama Adshi Satyam Agula once says until the top of the castle is closed, but Kharama Adshi Itakel Habasa, and the other one says until the flesh decomposes. Mandama Adshi Tabel Bahabasa, the one who says until the flesh decomposes, Dirti, for it says, Ach Basara Allah Yicha, Venasha Allah Teval. But his flesh will be pained over its demise in itself, Shaman itself. Mandama Adshi Satyam Agula. The one who says until the top of the casket is closed, um, they get it from the Pasuk, Vayasov, no, Vayashov 
he afar al haritz kishah yavagomem. Joshua returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Tarnu rabbanan, barov tashuv el ha elokim asher natana. Spirit returns to God who gave it. Tana lo kmosh natata lecha to give it. Uh, give it to him like he gave it to you. The mm. um its impurity, after the Tahara, so to you must return it impurity. Would you agree with that? Yes. Mashallah Melech Basavadam, it's analogous to the king of flesh and blood. Sheikhi Lekbi de Malchudlav Dav, he distributed royal apparel to his servants. Pikhin Shabahen. Kiflum in Nichum Bikufsa, those among the servants who are wise folded and place them in a box of soaking. Tipshim Shabahen Halkva Subahim Malacha, and those among them who were foolish went and performed labor with them. Leomim. Sometime later, Bikesh Amelheta Kelav, the king requested his garments returned. Pichin Shabahen Hechezirum Lokeshem Megohatsin, those who had been wise returned to the king they depressed. Because they safeguarded the the clothes, tip shin shabahen hechzirum lo kashehen meluch lachin. Those who had been foolish returned them to the king's soil. Samach hamelach likrat pichin. The king greeted the wise uh, with happiness. With kaas likrat tip shin greeted the foolish with anger. Al pichin amar concerning the wise said, Yinatenu kelai leotzar. Let my garments be placed in my chest meaning uh, put them back because they're undim- not diminished. Vehem yochul the shalom and let them go back to their homes in peace. Ve'al tipshin amar kelai yinatenu lekoves let my garments be given to a launderer because they were treated poorly. Vehem yitchabshu bevet ha'asurim and let them be confined in prison for the irresponsibility. I like that story. It's a nice, neat little one. I can remember talking about Tip Shin when I worked in the jewellery factory in Jerusalem, the, the sort of forewoman who... Rachel Hilleli. She used to shriek at people when they did something wrong. A kaki pish! Mother, she had a kaki pish! That's very funny. And everyone would have a good laugh. <laughs> Not when Rachel Hilleli was shouting at you, you didn't laugh. After Kalash Baruchu, she was still sure to shout, Bagarit! Bagarit. Bagger it, but <laughs> she spent some time in England, so she picked up a certain amount. <laughs> That's crazy. Bagger it. Oh, sorry. Hakadosh Baruch Hu. So with Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Al Gufan shall speak on Mamer concerning the bodies of the righteous. He says, Yavo Shalom Yanuchu Al Mishkvotam. Let him come in peace and let them rest in on their couches, meaning rest peacefully in their grave, but Al Nishmatan Hu Omer, and concerning the souls of the righteous, he says, Bahaita Nefesh Adonit Trura Bitro Hachayim, may the soul of my master be bundled in the bundle of my life. Al Gufan Shel Rishaim Hu Omer, concerning the bodies of the wicked, he says, En Shalom Ama Hashem Le Rishaim, there shall be no peace, says God, for the wicked. But Al Nishmatan Hu Omer, and concerning their soul, he says, Let Nefesh Ovecha. Ye kalena betoch kaf hakala, and as for the soul of your enemy, may God sling it from the hollow of a sling. In other words, cast it far away, I should imagine. He hadn't expanded on that, but that sounds. Yeah, there's no expansion here either. Tanya, Rabbi Eliezer Omer, Nishmatam shall tadi king genuzot. The souls of the righteous are ensconced beneath the heavenly throne. Shnei ma'avah haitan nefesh adonit ruravit ruah hachayim. 
As it says, may the soul of my master be bundled in life, in the bundle of life, meaning with God. Veshel reshaim zomamot v'holchot, but the souls of the wicked they are perpetually confined. Umalach, umalach echad omed besof ha'olam, and an angel stands at the end of the universe. <clears throat> Do you have a universe? Um, yes. End of the world. Umalach acher omed besof ha'olam, another angel stands at the other end of the world or the universe. Umekalin nishmatan zelazeh, and they sling the souls of the wicked backward and forth to each other. Shemar ped nefesh ovecha ye kalena betoch kaf. Hakala, as it says in the pasuk, and as for the soul of your enemy, may God sling it from the from the hollow of a sling. Hilarious, kind of. Amale Rabba Rav Nachman. I wouldn't want to beat the soul though. Shel Benonim Mai. I wonder if you can call that Ruach Ra. I don't know. But Rabbi Destler uses a similar image in relation to what happens to the soul after death uh, and its experience of God. Mm. It's sort of as if it's passed from one side of heaven to the other, doubling its knowledge each time. Mm. So you've got a, a geometrical <coughs> sort of expansion of uh, the experience of God that the soul has. So, well, we can, so no, this is for the, the good. This was for the wicked, though, right? Yeah, that was for the wicked. And for the good, and the knowledge expands ex- of God ex- expands exponentially. Uh, and, of course, there's no end to it because God's infinite, and consequently you never get the full knowledge. But when you die, the point at which you start mm. depends on what your attainments on earth have been, your spiritual level that you have on earth. So those who fail to do well, although they their experience of God increases and increases and increases, they have the eternal regret of knowing that they will never, no matter even though they live for eternity in this mm. experience of God, they will never attain ultimately the uh, level of knowledge and experience of God that those souls that worked better on earth and had a better sort of base from which to start will never catch up with it. And he suggests that's the that is the nature of the torment of those who fail. Mm-hmm. That they know what's there and what they could reach and know that they can never reach it. It's a rather neat way of looking at it. Amal Rabbi Lerav Nachman. Shal Benonim Mai. What about the Benonim? Medium people, medium rare. Amale ika shechivna lo lo amre lechol hai milta. Had I died, I would not have been able to tell you about this matter. Hachem mashuel says Yisrael. Elu elu l'tuma nimsarin. These and those, the souls of the wicked and the benonim, are handed over to tuma. Halalu yesh lahen manoach, and these. But these souls, the Benonim, have rest. Halloween, Lahen Manoch. And those, the wicked, have no rest. So you're both going to hell. But it's very similar to the Catholic view that you have sort of hell and heaven at an intermediate stage. Well, they hold that, um, for instance, people who haven't been baptised and consequently don't get up mm. aren't really Christians but who've led decent lives. Mm. They go to an eternity where they 
enjoy the equivalent of earthly pleasures without the deeper knowledge. I'm on. <laughs> oh, what? As if you want to censor that last thing. Amar of Mari, Atitin Sadikin Jahabu Afra, the righteous are destined to become dust in the grave. And thus shall return to the earth as it was, meaning even the righteous return to dust, just like anyone else. Hanehu ka pulae. Jehavu kaflei ba'ara de Rav Nachman. There were once some diggers who were digging on the land of Rav Nachman, and it says here they came upon a corpse of Rav Achai bar Yoshia, a sage who had died generations earlier. Nacha behu Rav Achai bar Yoshia. Rav Achai bar Yoshia snorted at them. <laughs> The corpse, Atul Vamru Leila Rav Nachman. They came and said to Rav Nachman, Nacharban Gavra, a dead man snorted us. He uses the word rebuked. Rebuked us. Atabamale. Rav Nachman came to the grave and said to the corpse, Manihuma Amale. Ana Achai Bar Yoshia. Amale. Rav Nachman said to the corpse, Velai Amar Rav Mari. But did not Rav Mari say, Atidei Tzadikei Tzahav Wafra? The righteous are destined to become dust. Amalei Umani Mari. And who's Mari? Zeloya Danale. I don't know him. Meaning, his words are pointless. Amalei, Rav Nachman replied to the cause. Vahakrai Ketiv, but it says in the Pasuk, Vayashov Heafar Al Haaret Keshayan, the dust shall return to the earth as it was. Amalei, Surah Vachai, the body Rachai, said to Rav Nachman, De Ekrayecha, sorry, De Ekrayech, Kohelet Lo Ekrayech Mishlei. He who taught you Kohelet did not teach you Mishlei. Dichtiv or kavatamod kina, for you are ignorant of the verse that says the rotting of bones is caused by envy. Kol mi lo kina bilibo, meaning whoever has envy in his heart, atmotav markivim, his bones will rot after he dies. Kol she'en lo kina bilibo, and whoever does not have envy in his heart, ein atmotav markivim, his bones will not rot after he dies. And there you go, that's why he never rotted. Go on, there's more. Geshashe Rav Nachman felt Rav Achai's corpse. Achai's corpse. Chaz yed it be meshashe. He perceived that there was substance to it. Meaning the flesh was real, not just a mirage. Amale. Rav Nachman said, Lekom ag legave deveta. Let Master Rise and come into my house. Amale. Galet adatach tafilo... Nivye lo karit. You have demonstrated uh, that you're ignorant of Proverbs, and now you show that you haven't even read Prophets. Nevi'im. Dichtiv. Vizatem ki ani Hashem bepitri et kivrotechem. And you'll recognize that I'm Hashem when I open your graves. And lift you up from your graves, my nation. He's mm. added here for the quote. And, and it says here, this indicates that it is only God who may bring forth the dead. Right. Ah, as in, Tchiyatamiti, I yes. say. Amalei, Rav Nathan said to the body of Rav Achai, Bakhtiv ki afara ata ve'el afara tashur, but it's written, for you are just. And to just show you return. Amale, the corpse replied, Hahu sha'a achat kodem tchiyatametim. That is the moment before the resurrection of the dead. Amale, hahu tzeduki l'rabi avahu. 
He so, said it so that they too may be created anew. So certain Tiduki said to about Rabbi Abahu, Amritu Nishmatan Shel Tzadikim Gnuzot Tachat Kisei Kavod. You said that the souls of the righteous are ensconced beneath the heavenly throne of God. Ovat Hamya Hecha Askei Lishmo Bin Gida. But how did that bone necromancer raise Shmuel through necromancy? Is that the way you've got it? Yeah. Amale, Hatam betoch shnei masa chodesh hava. There, with Shaul and the sorceress, it was within 12 months of his death, so he hadn't come to a final resting place. Titania, as we have from a Abraisa, Kol Shnemasa Chodesh Gufo Kayam, all twelve months after death, his body remains intact. Nishmato Ola, we read it, and his soul rises and descends. Lachar Shnemasa Chodesh. So his body remains intact. Body remains and his soul ascends and descends, such that it is sometimes in this world with its body. Hmm. After twelve months, Haguf Patel, the body ceases to exist, the Nishmatola and his soul arises. The Shuv Enas and then it no longer descends. Hmm. 